name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Good afternoon, my dear brothers and sisters. We are very sad today because it's the last day of phase two. <laughs> so we are very happy that finally we are going tomorrow to phase three. We'll be able to sing. I was tempted to start singing already, but we cannot. But for next week, you know, but the choir will be able to start singing. And it will be really, as we sang just now, we heard this joy to the world will be more joyful celebrations. This Christmas is our faith. Today we are celebrating the Day of the Holy Family. Sunday after Christmas, we celebrate the Holy Family of Mary, Jesus, and Joseph. I will pray in a special thanksgiving for the intentions of Angelo Pan, Audrey Liao, Claire Chen Yu, Joan Peng, John and Shirley Pan, Lucrecia Achubu, Matthias and Maria Chua, Michael and Josephine Pen, Peter and Doris Pen, Tekar Lang, and double anniversaries in their weddings of Helen and Godfrey, and Marianne and Derek Lazaro. We also, in Thanksgiving, offer this Mass in Thanksgiving to Our Lady of Fatima. We also pray for the special intentions of Adrian Liao, Edgar Pangilinan, Emmanuel Mack, Filomena Narvasa, Fion Heden, Fraser and Kimberly Heden and family, James Valente, James, Ian, Julie, and John Pangilinan, Enzio Giok, Rosaline and Michael Tio, pray especially for the health of Rosaline. For Saint Xiao, Teresita Valente, Victoria Campbell, Vivian Chu, and we pray for the restoration of St. Joseph Church. And for the souls of the faithful departed, among them Aloysio and Catherine Pinto, Amayela Pereira, Agustin and Lucy Roche, Ben and Anli Roche, Bertrand and Gladys Sea, Jeffrey Liat Wang Sen, Marife Manipis, Veronica Cecilia de Melo, and for all the souls of the faithful departed in purgatory. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, from my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us say together, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. 
let us pray. O God, who are pleased to give us the shining example of the Holy Family, graciously grant that we may imitate them in practicing the virtues of family life and in the bonds of charity, and so in the joy of, our, of your house, delight one day in eternal rewards. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Genesis. The word of the Lord was spoken to Abram in a vision. Have no fear, Abram. I am your shield. Your reward will be very great. My Lord, Abram replied, what do you intend to give me? I go childless. Then Abram said, see, you have given me no descendants. Some man of my household will be my heir. And then this word of the Lord was spoken to him. He shall not be your heir. Your heir shall be of your own flesh and blood. Then taking him outside, he said, look up to heaven and count the stars if you can. Such will be your descendants, he told him. Abram put his faith in the Lord, who counted this as making him justified. The Lord dealt kindly with Sarah as he had said, and did what he had promised her. So Sarah conceived and bore a son to Abraham in his old age, at the time God had promised. Abraham named the son born to him Isaac, the son to whom Sarah had given birth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response is, he the Lord is our God. He remembers his covenant forever. He the Lord is our God. He remembers his covenant forever. Give thanks to the Lord, tell his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. O oh, sing to him, sing his praise. Tell all his wonderful works. He the Lord is our God. He remembers his covenant forever. Be proud of his holy name. Let the hearts that seek the Lord rejoice. Consider the Lord and his strength. Constantly seek his face. He the Lord is our God. He remembers his covenant forever. Remember the wonders he has done, his miracles, the judgments he spoke. O children of Abraham, his servant, O sons of the Jacob, he chose. He, the Lord, is our God. He remembers his covenant forever. He remembers his covenant forever, his promise for a thousand generations, the covenant he made with Abraham, the oath he swore to Isaac. He, the Lord, is our God. He remembers his covenant forever. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. It was by faith that Abraham obeyed the call to set out for a country that was the inheritance given to him and his descendants, and that he set out without knowing where he was going. It was equally by faith that Sarah, in spite of being past the age, was made able to conceive because she believed that he who had made the promise would be faithful to it. Because of this, 
they came from one man and one who was already as good as dead himself. More descendants that could be counted, as many as the stars of heaven or the grains of sand on the seashore. It was by faith that Abraham, when put to the test, offered up Isaac. He offered to sacrifice his only son, even though the promises had been made to him and he had been told, it is through Isaac that your name will be carried on. He was confident that God had the power even to raise the dead. And so, figuratively speaking, he was given back Isaac from the dead. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise for the gospel acclamation. Alleluia, alleluia. At various times in the past and in various different ways, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets. But in our own time, the last days, he has spoken to us through his son. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. When the day came for, for them to be purified, as laid down by the law of Moses, the parents of Jesus took him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, observing what stands written in the law of the Lord. Every firstborn male must be consecrated to the Lord and also to offer in sacrifice in accordance with what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now in Jerusalem, there was a man named Simeon. He was an upright and devout man. He looked forward to Israel's comforting, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him that the Holy Spirit, that he would not see death until he had set eyes on the Christ of the Lord. Prompted by the Spirit, he came to the temple, and when the parents brought in the child, Jesus, to do for him what the Lord Required, he took him into his arms and blessed God, and he said, Now, Master, you can let your servant go in peace, just as you promised, because my eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared for all the nations to see, a light to enlighten the pagans and the glory of your people, Israel. As the child's father and mother stood there, wondering at the things that were being said about him, Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, you see this child? He is destined for the fall and for the rising of many in Israel destined to be a sign that is rejected, and a sword will pierce your own soul too, so that the secret thoughts of many may be laid bare. There was a prophetess also, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was well on in years. Her days of girlhood over, she had been married for seven years before becoming a widow. She was now 84 years old and never left the temple, serving God night and day with fasting and prayer. She came by just at that moment 
I began to praise God. And she spoke of the child to all who looked forward to the deliverance of Israel, of Jerusalem. When they had done everything the law of the Lord required, they went back to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. Meanwhile, <clears throat> the child grew to maturity, <clears throat> and he was filled with wisdom, and God's favor was with him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The day of Christmas, we are focusing in the place where our Lord was born, Bethlehem. Now the story places us, lead us to Nazareth. While Jesus Christ and Mary and Joseph spent most of their lives, and so many we consider also during Christmas, so many extraordinary things happen in the way, for example, the Annunciation took place to Mary, in the way Mary conceived, in the way the shepherds received from the angels the announcement that a baby, a child, man and God is born, the irrational fury of Herod, and then another angel coming to St. Joseph to leave and to go to Egypt, after so many extraordinary things, now, today, celebrating the Holy Family, we can consider actually the ordinary life, the ordinary life of Mary, Joseph, and Jesus in Nazareth, full of ordinary things like our lives, cleaning the dust, cooking, taking care of the children, and Jesus, we have read just in the Gospel, grew in maturity, in age, in stature. And his whole life was just study, learning, working later in the worship of St. Joseph, day after day, for 30 years. 30 years of obscurity. Some people in some books, even in theology, they describe it as the hidden life of Jesus. It was not hidden. St. Thomas Aquinas said that every single day, actions of Jesus Christ were redeeming. And Jesus was redeeming, actually, the human condition in everything. And telling us that our family life and our life of work that composes most of our lives can be also holy. San spiritual author used to say, unless we see God in this ordinary and transcendental things of the ordinary life, otherwise we will never see God. God remains also hidden there in these ordinary things of our everyday life. The greatness of the ordinary life. The pulling so many times because of fatigue, because of routine, that is the main enemy in the spiritual life, in the matrimonial life, the spiritual life. Routine can destroy everything, because routine is the opposite of love. How different is, for example, when we go to work in the morning, early in the morning, we try to put love in every single person that we meet, with a smile, in the takes of kindness, with an attentive ear to the pronouns of the others, we try to perform, we try to work well, not just for money, not just because of competitivity. They say Singapore is a very competitive society. Yes, it is. But it cannot be the main reason to, to go to work. How different it is when we put love and prayer in every single thing that we do, in the people we meet, in the tasks we do. Because that was the secret of Mary, Jesus, and Joseph that we are contemplating today as the Holy Family. And we can imagine the number of years and Joseph, yeah, making tables, cover, chairs. And they become holy because he was coming actually from a heart full of love. And that personality and character and heart of St. Joseph was transporting to the actions that he was doing. 
In that way, we can sanctify. We can enjoy the power of the Holy Spirit to sanctify every single thing that we do, as long as we do it with love, taking care of the single little things, taking care of the people we deal with. I heard in Italy the following story when I was living there from 1995 to 1998. One guy who went to work and saw that his colleague came looking very sad and immediately took some interest. What happened to you today? Looking so sad. I don't want to talk. No, no, please tell me. They were good friends. The guy sat down, didn't want to talk, but finally his friend, his colleague, sat down close to him and finally opened up. Why are you looking so sad today? You don't want even to talk to me. My wife, he said, asked for divorce this morning. He was really, really sad. And his colleague, his friend, Catholic, told him, taking some interest in the problems of his colleague. Pour in love. San Diego de Cross already said that when there is no love, pour love, and then you will draw out of love. So he tried. And he said, if I were you, I would buy flowers for her this evening when you go back home. His friend became more angry, even. Come on, you're stupid. My wife asked me for separation and divorce this morning, and you are telling me to buy flowers. This is naive. Please let me in peace. And he they spent the whole day without talking, working, working, working. In the evening, when he was coming, going back home, this person saw a flower shop open. And the suggestion of his friend came to his mind. He entered into the flower shop and bought some flowers, went home, opened the door, saw his wife, and in that moment when the wife saw him entering and with a very beautiful bouquet of flowers, broke into tears and told him, honey, in these 15 years of marriage, this is the first time you buy flowers to me. And they sat down, they have a nice conversation, and the problems started being solved. When I shared this story with a friend of mine, told me, I oh, never buy flowers to my wife. Why? Because they dry up. They will last only one or two or three days. Yeah, maybe the flowers. But the flowers resemble actually the love that you have for your wife. And the number of people. She's going to share this with so many people. You have made not only the day, but maybe the whole month with these flowers. Love is in the details. And today we are celebrating this. That love is the opposite of routine. Routine is the opposite. We become moody. We take for granted people, our task. We do not put decorations in the house because more things to clean. And routine is creeping in not only in our souls, in our relationships, in our homes. And this is destroying the real love. That's why all of us, we need to pay attention to this story of Mary, Jesus, and Joseph. When nobody actually was thinking that in my time, my money, my prestige, my things, me, 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 no. Everything is put at the service of the others, and redemption, again, was accomplished every single day. In such a way that actually St. Thomas Aquinas said the cross was not needed. Every single action of Jesus Christ was already redeeming us. How many times do we try to practice that in our daily routine, in our relationships at home, in the listening ear, to the things, to the problems, to the non-interesting things of the others, the corrections we will receive of fraternal corrections whenever we need to give to them. That requires a lot of humility. You know, I heard from the spokesman of John Paul II, now St. John Paul II, many, many anecdotes 
of his daily life full of humility, of that great Pope, that great Saint, Saint John Paul II. You know, after the assassination attempt in 1981, 13th of May, a couple of bullets, especially one, almost killed him. The bullet ended up later in the crown of Our Lady of Fatima in Portugal. Our Lady saved his life, he said. But the consequences of that bullet remained there because some nerves were killed. And because of that, when he grew older, John Paul II developed a little bit of a problem in walking in one of his legs, and also a tick, some kind of movement in his left hand, was many times trembling. And he was trying many times in public to hide it. Celebrating masses, for example, like me, hiding with the chasuble, the hand that was trembling. We had to fold papers. He tried not to use his left hand, just with the right was enough, otherwise the paper was trembling. He was trying to hide his defect. One day, it was summer, when he was in the summer palace of Castel Gandolfo, he had a meeting with this spokesman who told me the story. They met because they were having, in a couple of months, a trip, and they had to discuss many details of that trip. And John Paul II, with total simplicity, told this man, his spokesman, già arrivato il tempo, he said in Italian, di superare tutte le debolezze del corpo. By saying, I think it's already time to overcome the weaknesses of my own body. From now on, I will not care. I will not pay attention that the people see my own defects. I do not care that the people see my hand trembling. I will not pay attention to these things because otherwise I can start thinking too much in myself. And he did not want to do that. He wanted to dedicate his life to the people, to the others. That requires humility. Whenever we grow older, and we have sickness and things that can make us be introvert, thinking too much in ourselves, talking too much to, to ourselves and about ourselves. This is a risk for love. What we have to do is actually to think more in the others, to serve the others. That is the life and the example that we see in Nazareth. When John Paul II, let me share another little story, went to Sarajevo, after the civil war there, he managed to celebrate a mass outside in a park. It was very, very cold, and John Paul II was also sick. He was with a little bit of a flu. They almost canceled the trip, but he said no. These people have suffered a lot more than me. They deserve the Pope to be there. And then he made the trip. When he was celebrating the Mass, he was all the time with a handkerchief. All the time with a handkerchief on his nose, missing. And at the end of the Mass, many people were there present. His personal secretary talking about the beauty of the Mass, the beauty of so many people who suffer so much there. But what a pity that your holiness, you suffer also so much because of your cold. And then he said, what is this in comparison to the suffering of so many people who have been killed here in Sarajevo? This is nothing. You see, many times, thinking in the others is so powerful. Praying for the others is so powerful that allows us to forget about our, ourselves our problems, our sicknesses. And this is the example that we get from Joseph, Mary, and Jesus. They never complain. It's an extraordinary example of what love is all about. Leo Tolstoy, this great Russian writer, said that the supreme happiness in life is the conviction that we are loved. St. John, in his gospel, in his letter, says something very similar. We can laugh because somebody, God Almighty, loved us first. And the proof is this Christmas, when he sent to us his only begotten son. 
Let us, as we celebrate the Holy Family, pray for the unities in the families, for the bonds of unity, and for the love that has to grow in the bosom of every single family in this country and in the world. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please raise your decree. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will, he will come, come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored, adored and glorified, as spoken, spoken through, through the prophets. prophets. I believe, I believe in, in one, one holy, holy, Catholic, and, and apostolic church. church. I, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, sins. And, I and I look forward, forward to the resurrection of the dead, of the dead and, and the life of the world, world to, come. to come. Amen. Today, we are reminded that the Holy Family stands as a model for us as we face the challenges of the many tensions and crises that threaten the stability, peace, and unity of the family life. Let us ask the Lord to shape our families into units where love, compassion, forgiveness, justice, and peace reign. Let our response be, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For the church that the Spirit of God may bind us together in his love, a love that unites us to God in a covenant of compassion and justice. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our Pope Francis and our Archbishop William, that they may continue to be filled with God's abundant grace and be strengthened in their vocation as shepherds of God's flock. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For families in crisis, in mourning and estranged, that Christ, our compassionate Lord, may grant them the graces and strength they need in the challenges they face. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For children and young people, that they may learn to grow in the wisdom and grace of Christ, who will bring them the joy of a loving family. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our own families, that we may always witness the sanctity of the family through our selfless and unconditional love of Christ, both in good times and in bad. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We also pray for the intentions mentioned earlier and your own personal intentions. God, our Father, hear the prayers of your family gathered around your table. Help us to face our family challenges with unwavering faith and have the wisdom of your vision that dares to entrust all things to God's compassionate care. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Please be seated. No, sorry. We are going to say the prayer that we are using for this bicentennial of the presence of the Catholic Church in Singapore. Heavenly Father, your, your son, son commissioned, commissioned his, his apostles, apostles to, to bring, bring the gospel to, to the ends, ends of the earth. earth. Our founding missionaries left home and country so that we in Singapore may receive the good news and your loving salvation. Thank you for this gift of faith and for all those who labor to keep it alive and burning these 200 years. Lord Jesus, our faith is in danger of becoming irrelevant because of secularism materialism, individualism, and relativism. Grant our communities a renewed missionary zeal and courage to proclaim your name and lordship. Send forth your spirit, O Lord, to renew your people with the conviction and courage of our early missionaries. To kindle our faith so that we can be beacons of light in a, in a world darkened, darkened by sin, hopelessness, and ignorance. ignorance. Protect, Protect us from the snares of the evil one, and, and grant us the grace to remain, to remain faithful to you. you. May, May our, our families be models, be models of love and, and unity. unity. Our, our workplaces be sanctuaries for justice and integrity. And integrity. Truth, Truth and charity be taught, be taught in our, our classrooms. Parishes live out the mission in communion. The poor, sick, and abandoned see the face of God in us. And may peace and harmony reign among peoples of every race, language, and religion in our land. Blessed Mother, you were the first disciple and evangelizer to announce Jesus as Savior to the world. Intercede and grant us your maternal guidance and protection as we navigate the uncertain future. Father, may your love and grace ignite our hearts and lead us to launch a new era of faith so that we may once again be a more vibrant, evangelizing, and missionary church. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, present the sacrifice, and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name. 
for our good and the good of all His holy church. We offer you, Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation, humbly asking that through the intercession of the Virgin Mother of God and Saint Joseph, you may establish our families firmly in your grace and your peace. Through Christ our Lord, Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in the mystery of the world made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our mind, so that as we recognize in him God made visible, we may be caught up through him in love of things invisible. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the wholesome powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord God, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. May holy therefore these gifts we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them, let the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, one supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, William, the Bishop of this diocese, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, 
we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will, will be done, done on earth, earth as, as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as, as we forgive, forgive those who trespass against us. us. And, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. <clears throat> that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord, Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who we'll live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins, sins of the world, world have, have mercy on us. us. Lamb, Lamb of God, God you, you take, take away, away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. I invite those following the Mass online to repeat with me the spiritual communion. I wish, Lord, to receive you with the purity, humility, and devotion with which your most holy mother receive you, with the spirit and fervor of the saints. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
bring those you have bring those you refresh with this heavenly sacrament most merciful father to imitate constantly the example of the holy family so that after the trials of this world we may share their company forever through Christ our Lord amen yeah may sit down for one minute before the final blessing and the prayer for the Holy Queen and the prayer to St. Michael, yeah, very briefly for announcements. The Sunday Mass bookings for January, very close already, the new year, will be open in a couple of days, Tuesday the 29th of December at 9 a.m. Second, please invite your friends and family to join us in our weekly rosary God willing, tomorrow, Monday, at 28th of December at 8 p.m. It's done by Zoom, and the Zoom meeting link is found in the Facebook page of St. Joseph, Victoria Street. Then also a reminder that because of the increase, even now more, after tomorrow in phase three, the government allows us to have more parishioners in our churches, so in the cathedral also trace together is required. Please make sure that you have either the talking with you or the application ready to enter the church compound, but also the identification card, the IC, is also needed for the mass registration. Number four, Follow the indications of the volunteers as we proceed to leave the church compound. Follow the instruction of the wardens and make use of your mask at all times. Wishing you a very holy and happy Sunday. Ah, good weather for the time being, but we cross our fingers because every day we have heavy rains at any time. So we need the mask, we need the umbrella, we need the IC. We need big bags. Maybe we are not traveling, but we need to bring our luggages with us all the time if we continue like that. Let's pray that God Almighty help us to go out of this and the vaccines in the different parts of the world, they are bringing us out of this situation. Please, let's, let us pray now. First, receive the final blessing and then the prayer to our Lady. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass ascended, go in peace. Thanks be to God. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother, Mother of mercy. mercy. Hail, Hail our, our life, life our, sweetness, our sweetness, and our, and our hope. To thee, thee do we cry, poor, poor banished, banished children of Eve. Eve. To, to thee, thee do we send up our, our sighs, Morning and weeping, and weeping in, this in this valley of tears. Turn, Turn them, most gracious advocate, thine eyes of mercy towards us. And after this, our exile, show unto us the blessed, the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in the day of battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the other evil spirits who prowl through the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.